If you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create cool effects, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. Welcome back guys, today we're going to talk about the new Polo G music video, My All, directed by Cole Bennett. They have this awesome spin effect transition, it's a great storytelling visual technique. It's more of a cerebral effect than it is a technically difficult effect, meaning it's not that hard to pull off in your editing software, but if you want it to look its best, you have to think about your scene and you have to make sure you have those details right. In my opinion, those are the best, most unique, interesting things you can do. So let's hop in here. I'm going to break down how I think they pulled this off and then we're going to go into After Effects and I'll show you how to create something like this yourself. Of course, if you want to learn more fun visual things like this, click that red subscribe button down below, slap like on the video if you do enjoy to help support the channel and comment anything you'd like to see me make in the future. So what I think they did is they had Polo G sitting and performing in this chair in front of a green screen. That way they could isolate him from the background completely, have full control over those two layers. Then I think they seamed two backgrounds together and created a simple spin transition to go from one to the next. Very easy. We'll show you how to set that up in After Effects. They also had Polo G do this sort of movement at the end of each verse. So we would add realism to the change of pace and velocity during each of those spin transitions. Pay attention to how the lighting changes dynamically as they swap scenes as well. This is super important for compositing to make sure he looks in place within the scene. All right, so now let's hop into After Effects and I'll show you how to create something like this with or without a green screen. All right, guys, so let's get started with an After Effects. Here's what our final composition is going to look like. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to create a new project here. We'll make this 1920 by 1080. And let's drag in the footage that I shot. So this would be your performance footage. We'll just fit that to the composition. You can see sitting in a chair and just doing a fake little motion like that. So first of all, if you didn't shoot this on a green screen, obviously if you did, this will be a lot easier in terms of changing the background because you'll just have to key out the green. But if you didn't, you can still use rotoscoping to pull this off. So I'm going to double click on my footage here and it should put you in a layer. So now that we're in a layer, you just want to go up and grab your roto brush tool. Start at the beginning here and I'm just going to color over myself. So using the left click for the green brush, make the selection over where you want it. If it doesn't do anything, hold down alt for the red brush. Now you can see it's cutting around. And if you have any issues here, it's saying frame rate mismatch. It wants it to be 23.976. Just go to comp and comp settings and make the composition match your footage. So we'll change this to 23.976. So once you have a rough outline of that, you can move frame by frame by clicking the page up or page down keys by default. You should see the algorithm click into place and give you a nice little outline around yourself or whatever it is you're trying to isolate. You just need to make any adjustments. So if your arms are out of frame whenever they're coming in, just use your green brush, use your red brush to add them in and obviously cut out the parts you don't want and then just keep moving frame by frame. Now one issue here that is going to help immensely, you can see it's having a hard time making a selection and that's because I have motion blur on my camera enabled. If you're doing this and you're planning on rotoscoping, I recommend you guys shoot with a faster shutter speed so you're not getting this motion blur. That way, whenever you rotoscope, it's gonna be a lot easier and you're gonna get a lot better results. So keep that in mind, shoot at a faster shutter speed, make any adjustments you guys need to make. Once you guys are finished with that, you can change around the selection that you want to freeze by grabbing these little edges on the select bar, then go ahead and click the freeze button. So pretty easy, we can click back over to the composition and now you guys can see we have myself cut out from our background footage. If I was to hide this, you could see the background come back. And this will be good enough for now. Again, it's not the best roto, it's not the best results. I could have been better with the lighting. I could have shot at that faster shutter speed to reduce that motion blur, like I said. But you guys can play around here with your roto brush settings, add any feather, reduce chatter. You can check on motion blur if you need to. So this should work well. So next we need our background. So to create our background, Again, if you guys shot this on a green screen, you're going to be using completely custom backgrounds throughout. But if you want to do this from any old shot, here's how you guys can sort of piece together your own background. Before we go into the whole spin movement, let's go ahead and just click Control Shift D and we'll turn off Roto Brush for this beginning part. So this is going to be our background and this is what our background looks like right before our spin. So you want this to be what is rotating. So what we're going to do here 
I'm going to go one frame before we start our spin. Control D to duplicate and then Control Shift D just to split that one little frame. We don't need this. This is the one frame we need. So we'll keep that there for now. While we're doing that, we're gonna go to Project. I'm gonna create a new composition here, 1920 by 1080, and I'm gonna name this Tutorial Background. And doing it this way is gonna save you a ton of time and trouble. So create a new composition. We're gonna go back to this Tutorial Comp, and I'm gonna drag in this singular frame right before we go into our spin. So we'll click Control X to cut pop into our new comp and control V to paste. If you guys paste this in and you can't actually find the layer, easy way to fix that, just control Z everything. Say for example, you're maybe cutting out a piece that's like in the middle of this. What you wanna do is just take this, drag it to the beginning of your timeline and then click control X. And that way, whenever you paste it in, it's always gonna be right at the beginning. So quick little tip in case you can't copy and paste between these compositions. So we have our first frame. We're gonna right click, go to time, and we're going to freeze frame it. So that way we can drag this out. You can click play, nothing's gonna happen, just a picture. And now I'm gonna remove myself from this shot. We don't wanna have a carbon copy of me spinning in the background whenever we rotate scenes. So let's just go ahead and grab our pen tool. And I'm just gonna make a rough outline around myself, it doesn't have to be exact. We'll click M. And we'll change that mask to subtract. So you should see yourself cut out of your screen. And now what we're gonna do is go to window and you wanna click on the content aware fill section. This is, I think After Effects 2021 and up maybe, I'm not sure. It's been in there for a while now. Uh, so just plop that in here. I'm keeping alpha expansion around 10. Quick little tip here to save you a bunch of time. It's gonna say range work area. This is a still image, so we don't need to content aware fill multiple pieces of footage. You can just take your work area and set that to be one second. Make sure your range is work area and then generate a fill layer. And it should pop it up almost immediately. So that looks good enough for me. You can change your work area back once you've done that. If you need to, you can mess around with that fill area, like say for example, you don't want like this. You can just click Control D to duplicate, click G, grab your pen tool, grab a little section, then click V and just move this section over. So you can kind of cover things up. If that looks like a weird cutout, M to go to your mask and just feather it. And you guys can kind of like finesse it if you really need to by covering things up. This looks good enough for me. It's gonna be spinning anyway, so it doesn't have to look picture perfect. So now what we need to do, select both of these little fill layers. They're only one frame long. Right click, time, and freeze frame them. And just make sure they fit the same amount of the comp. So freeze frame the top one. And that way when we press play, you just have this long drawn out still image of our background with myself removed. So now let's select them all and just pre-compose this into one layer. And I'll name this background one. And now we want to add in the background that we're going to transition and spin into. So I chose this shot here from pexels.com, just downloaded it for free. And you can see what that looks like. I just kind of scaled it up. It's a pretty big image and like moved it over a bit, something like that. You guys can choose anything, just make sure the lighting is matching. So for example, in the lighting here, I have this these neon lamps, I have some blue, some pink on myself. So it makes sense to have a shot like this that I'm transitioning into. If I was spinning and transitioning into an outdoor shot and there's blue lighting and purple or pink on myself, it would look out of place. So again, keep that in mind. Remember in the breakdown how I said they were very smart and paid close attention to dynamically changing that lighting during each of the new verses so that it made sense, it composited correctly you guys could just plan it out in a more dumbed down fashion like I did here but either way to bring this shot together what we're gonna do is go to composition composition settings and I'm just gonna take the height of this composition and I'm going to double it so 1080 times 2 is 2160 and now you can see what we're going for here so if you look at the original video whenever they go through and do a spin you can kind of see how it looks like these two shots are connected at the edge perfectly and it just sort of flip flops. So we're going to do the same in our new composition. We're going to click this bottom layer and click P and drag it down here. 
and then we're going to click our top layer, our starting layer, and click P, and just drag it to the top of the comp. So like that, and then make this bottom one match up. And we can scale that to our liking later. Now you don't want this to be both upwards. You want to take your second shot here and you want to go to your effects and presets. I'm going to search for the flip plus flop utility. So do that. Now it should be upside down. And that's all you need. This is the perfect composition for making our life easier. And now we just need to add our spin. So let's go back to our tutorial comp and let me just close all these other test compositions just to make this easier for you. So you have your tutorial and your tutorial background. Now what we need to do is we need to place our tutorial background comp beneath our rotoscope or green screen footage. Again, if you did do the green screen, you don't have to do the whole content aware fill part of this tutorial. I just did that to show for people who do want to do this without any green screen. So drag in tutorial background composition, make sure it's underneath your rotoscoped footage. Name this me roto, that's fine. Start it here, and then we'll make it line up. So we'll click P, drag it down, and just like that, it's pretty good. You can see if you are doing that content aware fill, there may be some things that change in the background. So that is one downside for doing the rotoscope version. You guys can either cut out this part if you want to, or fix up your masking a little bit so that it's a bit more picture perfect between that switch, or maybe just add some speed ramping in Premiere so this all goes by quick and you can't even notice, notice this stuff in the back. So now we need to add our spin. Let's go to where we start to move. So right here, we're gonna go to our effects and presets and search for transform and drag that onto here, our background. So at this position, again, this is where we want to start the spin. So we'll click and drag down just to set keyframes for there. And then let's drag to where we want to end our spin, right there. We're gonna take our rotation and just set it to 180. And you see it completely switches over to the next one. And here's what you have. So to fix those gaps, what we're going to do, we're going to just create some scaling keyframes. So we'll open this up. You can either do it in the transform or in your normal transform, it doesn't really matter. Just create some keyframes, scroll a bit, click S, and then when it gets here, we'll click, we'll make it go back to normal. And then go back in here, set your keyframes whenever you see a gap, fix that gap if you need to, or move things around. Now let's make it look a lot less like a turning clock by adding, by adding in some motion blur. So just click toggle switches and modes here. You guys are going to see this motion blur. You guys are going to see this motion blur switch. Just enable that for the layer and it should enable it for the composition. And now you're going to see it looks a lot more realistic. You guys can go to comp comp settings and in advance, you can bump up that shutter angle if you want even more spin in there. You guys won't have to do so much scaling if you are working with that background footage. The only reason we have to scale is because we want it to match up with this original shot that we rotoscope from. And that's really about it, guys. The only other things you could do if for any reason you have a bad rotoscope, like for here, there's just a little bit of parts because of that motion blur in my original shot. You guys could keyframe a little bit. You guys could keyframe a bit of blur onto yourself. So I could go and add in like a camera lens blur, set that to zero, and then I could keyframe it. So whenever the spin picks up, I can just blur myself a bit and then set it back to zero just to cover up any little issues that you may be having. They didn't have that in original, but again, we're trying to make this so that anyone can pull this off. And there you guys go. You can mess around with your keyframes for the spin just to smooth those out a bit. You know, here's all my keyframes. You can right click just to make that easy ease or you guys can even go into your graph editor and it'll show the exact velocity of everything. So you can click and smooth those out if you really want to. And I think it looks pretty good. So a clever trick using compositing. Another fun thing you can do, you don't always have to make it spin. You guys could use this sort of thought processing. Uh, but do any other transition that I've talked about in the past or you know of in the past, apply any preset plugin that you guys want to kind of pimp this out. The core concepts stay the same. And if you're looking for any of those presets, plugins, etc., you guys can find some cool ones on my website, link down in the description. And that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn how they did this paper cutout effect in that same music video, you can click up here. That'll take you to another After Effects tutorial covering all of that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.